Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the four-game NBA slate for this evening. Uh, this is an early look, um, so obviously a lot of things can change. Projections can update, ownership can update, um, rosters can update, which will lead to projections updating, which will lead to ownership updating, things like that. Uh, I'll be back about, mm, about 6.30-ish, 6.15-ish to go over uh, live. Uh, the updated projections, the updated takes on the slate. So I encourage everybody to um, uh, to join us then. Uh, but for now, let's give let's do a, uh, an early look at these games. Very nice, handy four game slate, and I guess may as well just kind of go game by game here. Um, I mean, looking overall at the slate, there's you know one or two. Well, I mean, Luca's standing out as as a as a spend up. You probably want to try to get to. And there are some pretty decent, uh, some decent uh, mid range, uh, mid range plays as well. Um, four game slates, you, you think it's kind of tough to get different, but but it really isn't. Um, it, it's uh, we've all had quite a bit of success in these types of slates by just making one or two kind of ownership pivots and things like that. So you don't have to go completely crazy with these types of slates. Um, on the Detroit Washington side, uh, there's actually like three, four. I mean, there there are guys I like in this game. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Christoph Porzingis is rating to be one of the best overall plays on the slate for me. If I had to rank them, I would have him right, rated second right now. I mean, he's getting ownership, obviously, but uh, I think this is a very very strong play at this price. Um, there there's, as a matter of fact where there's usually quite a bit of center um, uh, possibility. There aren't that many on this slate. Like it's, after, after him, there's basically DeAndre Ayton. And, after, and, and aside from those two, there really isn't a lot to do as far as center goes on this slate. So I think Kristoff is a very, very strong play here. Um, Bradley Beal at 8,400 rates to be, you know, pretty strong as well. Uh, you could play them both point guard and shooting guard. Um, I guess if you want to go down a little bit more in the value rankings, you could play uh, Avdia. He was very he was very fishy the other night. I mean, I thought he was a very very strong play the other night. He didn't do anything. He uh he only got fourteen minutes. Um, uh, and that was very, very annoying. I think he started and got 14 minutes, or if that was the game before, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think it was the game before he, he had 23 minutes, which is why people played him here. I don't know exactly what happened here. Um, he just didn't get anything. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go back to him. As a matter of fact, you know, just, just for fun, let, 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 let's see if we can't figure out what happened in this game. Let's go back to Washington. Washington against uh, Cleveland. Let's look at game flow. And we did it. We, he did get the start. And then he just, he didn't play at all the second half after the first four minutes. What did he do in these first four minutes? He was over in one foul, one rebound, one turnover, one steal. Did he get hurt? I don't exactly understand what happened in this in this game. I guess you know what they did. I guess they, you know what they did. They started out the uh, just kind of like for show. And I guess when they brought in Will Barton, the idea was that Will Barton was going to just come off the bench. And, and you'll see that he played basically the entire uh, second half when he came in for for Avdia. So he came in, I guess, for Avdia here, and then Avdia just never got back into the game. Um, so I don't know what that means. In other words, is that going to be standard for what happens with Avdia if, if Barton is playing well? Um, let's go back. Let's let's see. Let's see the other Washington game. We have time, right? We can do, do this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So in this game, when 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 he did get the minutes, he came. Same thing. And this time, he got this fourth quarter run, I guess. Because I guess Barton didn't play as much in this game. 
Um, so I guess that's the deal. They're going to depend, like Avdia, his run is going to depend on Will Barton. So that is one thing you can learn, right? Is that you probably don't want to play Will Barton and Avdia together. That makes any sense. Um, so that's something we can learn from this. Um, and I let's see what did what did Barton do in this game? In this game in this five minutes in the fourth quarter, he was two for two with three rebounds. I don't know why they took him out. I don't know what they're doing over there. So uh, just not sure. <laughs> uh, maybe Avdi on a four game slate might be a decent play. Uh, again, if we're not sure what's going to happen with him, and it's possible he gets 14 minutes, but he also could get like 23, 24. Maybe it's worth a shot, but I don't know. That's uh, that's kind of difficult. So I don't know. Uh, we'll 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 hold off on Avdi for now. We'll maybe we'll take a deeper dive a little bit later, and I'll have something before lock. Um, aside from that, uh, nothing else on the Washington side. Didn't expect to go too far deep into that. On the Detroit side, um, Cade Cunningham uh, rates to be the best overall play with uh, respect to upside and value. And then you have Bojan Bogdanovic and Isaiah Stewart. They're looking pretty decent, actually. Um, what, what position they play Bojan at? Uh, power forward. And then Isaiah Stewart, he could be an okay power forward eligible guy. So Isaiah Stewart, Bogdanovich, Cade Cunningham on Detroit, and then Washington, Beal, and Porzingis. No real strong, you know, big, big time value in this game, though. All right. So let's move ahead to Dallas, New Orleans. And, and this is where you have Luca. I mean, he just has he just has the biggest projection by a lot. I mean, he's he projects to have 50. You know, median projection 56, and the next guy I have is 12 points lower. It's very difficult to fade a situation like that, um, unless it's really impossible to to play him. Um, and yeah, the value isn't great, but the mid range value is, is good enough that I think you could play him with, with, with without a lot of stress. So he's going to be really popular, and um, you know, he, he just he's, he's he's really good. So I, I would try to play him if possible. So. Uh, Luca, very, very strong play. As far as other spend ups from the Dallas side, I mean, as you might imagine, there's really not much. And when it comes to value, I really don't have much, if in anything, on Dallas either. Um, so I guess Dinwiddie would be the next one, but but not really. So for me on Dallas, it's just Luca or nothing. Uh, flipping over to New Orleans. Um, the two guys that you could pay up for somewhat are, are Zion Williamson and, or CJ McConnell McCollum. You have, um, what's his name? Brandon Ingram out. So naturally everybody's going to get a bump in usage and, and let's get rid of Cade for a second and see CJ McCollum certainly makes sense. Let me see if there's anybody else that's kind of showing up here. Mm, not really. On the New Orleans side, from a value perspective, we're really not getting much. So it's just it's just the main guys, Zion and CJ and uh, CJ McCollum. So what's what's happening here already is that through two games, the value is very very thin. But we're going to get to some in a, in a minute. So when you have have a, a slate with with thin value, sometimes it's better to not play kind of like the free Lucas square. And just because you have to pair Luke, if you, if it's, if you, if it means having to play really thin value to get to Luca, sometimes it's just better to throw them out. If they're really, really strong mid range plays. Like if you could play CJ, Mc, if you could play um, from the Washington game, like if you could play Beal, Porzingis and Cade, like all in this kind of like group. Um, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Even if that means that you don't, get to play Luca. All right. So moving on, I mean, speaking of value, you have the Clippers and OKC and the, I guess the big news, and we knew this before was that uh, not only is Shea Gilgis Alexander out, but also Josh Giddy is out. Um, and that is naturally going to open up 
like a whole bunch of value um, from Oklahoma City, or, or or so you would think. The only thing is, I mean, right now nobody's really showing up as that great a play. I mean, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it, but and and projections are going to update. But for now, the guys that are showing up as as the best plays are are Trey Man, um, Dort. And Kendrick Williams, Kendrick Williams. Um, I have to think that the the projections are going to get a little better on these guys, but as of now, they just really haven't updated. I guess so. We'll 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 we'll, we'll keep a look on it because I find it difficult to believe that these guys are not going to pop even more. And you could even put Pukashevsky in the mix here. Um, you know he's. Hasn't really gotten the minutes yet this year. He did in the first game, got 25 minutes. But, you know, if they if they free him, excuse me. Uh, I mean, if they free him, then uh then then he could have a, a big game here. It's uh it's a rough game with both those guys out. So there's certainly a great, you know, decent amount of blowout risk, but I'm not I'm not worried too much about that. Where the value is really showing up here is, is in the Clippers. Um, I, I imagine Paul George is out. Yeah. I was wondering why all these guys are, are popping here. Um, so with that said, let's, let's go over some of these Clippers there. They are showing up as the top point per dollar plays on the slate here. So let's take a look. So you have Norm Powell at 4,800. He's got a lot of upside whenever he gets rolling. Then you have Nicholas Batum, who's pretty criminally cheap at 3,200. Then you have a guy who doesn't, you know, he's not exactly the greatest fantasy producer, but at 4,100, I mean, Robert Covington's very difficult to avoid. Um, and then you have other guys that we like playing, or we don't like playing, but we are, are playing when these guys are out for the Clippers, and that would be Luke Kennard. And then also, uh, John Wall has flashed upside this year. So, all of these guys look to be really, really strong. Um, the, 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 I guess the, the wild card is going to be Kawhi Leonard, right? Because he's been kind of come, he's been coming off the bench, twenty minutes, twenty minutes. Um, but if there were a time to maybe give him a shot to play some minutes. With Paul George out, this would certainly make sense. I mean, I can't play him at, with 21 minutes, but you told me that he was going to get, you know, starter's role and play 32, 34 minutes. He'd be the best play on the slate by, by a huge amount. So when he'd have all that usage to himself, but, you know, it just doesn't seem like that's in the cards for him. Um, well, we'll see. You know, we'll keep it. We'll keep an eye on the, on the, on the coach speak. They say that he's starting with no limits, no minutes uh, limits, uh, no minute, no minutes restriction. And sure, Kawhi looks to be really, really strong. But aside from that, these are the value guys you want to look out for. And it's the presence of these this value that makes that's probably going to make Luca a pretty easy, easy, uh, easy play. Um. Okay, then then the last game of the night you have. Um, probably the best, you know, definitely the best basketball game. That would be Golden State against Phoenix. Um, I definitely think that the three top Phoenix guys are really, really strong, all of them. And, and, and that would be Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul. Um, I, they, they, they all look really, really, really strong. They actually are my third, fourth, and fifth top overall plays. Um, and they're all on the same team. So, um, if you could somehow get me a scenario where, where Golden State really runs out their guys and tries to play, um, I, I might do it. And you know what? I'm, I'm just looking at Steph Curry here and, I've, I've seen no minutes problems with him. 33 minutes, 36 minutes, 31 minutes, whatever. Um, 
this is obviously a game that Golden State wants to show out in. I know the Phoenix wants to put on a good performance here. This is a big, this is a big game, you know. So it's kind of hard to get to all these guys, but 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 let's just say that you were going to play like a like I don't want to play all three, but you play like two of those two of those Phoenix guys, maybe one of Paul or Booker with Aiton, and then you run it back with Curry. Um, and, or if you want, you know, you could. You could play Draymond. Let's just see what his minutes have been. Has he been, has he been playing over 30? Not quite, but this this could be a game where they roll him out. You know, he fouled out in his last game. So, um, I don't know. Uh, you could use the, that clipper value to kind of make the rest of your lineup work, but you could create kind of a cool late night late night hammer stack out of these, out of the main players from Golden State and Phoenix. You know, you don't get a chance to root too often for Curry. I mean, he's, he's not often a very, very good fantasy play anymore just because of, you know, his price is always really high and he's just always looks to be like a decent play, but never a smash. And Hey, you finally get a chance. You can play a uh, play Curry Booker. Hope this two kind of go out, go at it and go off. And um, Hey, you get to you get to root for a good basketball game. And then the other thing is that you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry too much about what's going on early because you could always talk yourself into thinking you have a chance. But you, what you are going to have to worry about is the Clippers uh, and the OKC making sure you get that value right. Okay. Um, but there's nothing you could do about it. <laughs> Even so, if you get the value wrong, you know what you do? You can still talk yourself into thinking it's going to be good enough. So uh, I actually recommend this. I think this is actually a good play um, to play two of these three Gulf Phoenix guys. I don't, probably one of Paul or Booker. I wouldn't play both. You, you put feet, put eight in there with them. You run it back with, with Curry and or green. I mean, I don't know if you can get away with this and then you can play the value guys from those, from those, from that, from that Clipper OKC game. You, you root, you root, you root for the Dallas, you root for Luca to only get like 40 or something like that. And uh, it's a nice little way to play a little handy four game slate. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I just might do that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, again, I don't want to lock in myself into anything at 12.15 p.m., but uh, I think uh, we kind of stumbled across uh, uh, a plan. But as you know, as Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. As a matter of fact, Mike Tyson actually never said that. But that, that's, um, that's, another, uh, that's for another story. Okay, uh, good luck, everybody. I will see you guys at 6.15 or so, where we will, uh, you know, go over late changes and all that stuff.